Aloha everyone, this is May 6th of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. We begin this episode early in the morning as Fisher 8 is still active on Luana Street in Leilani Estates. This is a scene in Leilani Estates at Fisher 8 just after midnight on May 6th. Fisher 8 is spattering but not producing any significant fountains at this time. Lava flows are starting to spread around the base, moving downhill along the roadway. So at this point in the eruption, each sunrise that's come has brought with it a rather significant escalation in activity at the erupt events, and today is no different. This flow front is the most significant we've seen so far. Fisher 8 is going to stay active throughout the night going to be mostly this spatter type activity but by morning that's going to switch to fountaining and producing the most voluminous lava flow that we've seen up to this point. McCalver's flying early that morning and this is the scene that he's presented with. A rather fast moving flow moving to the north down Luana Street getting ready to take out rows and rows of houses. A lot of this stuff is bringing back a lot of memories, just looking at you know, what was there before, even though some of the places I'm looking at are on the brink of destruction right here. But you can still remember all the good times at night, you know, hanging out in the yard, whatever, at different places. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of time is buried there. Looking at Fisher 8, we see the beginnings of a channelized flow. Zooming out, see that there's two active fissures uprift of Fisher 8 at this point. These have formed overnight, fissures 9 and 10. We see this large a uh -uh flow at roughly 9.30 in the morning. Moving to the north on Makame Street. So what ended up happening is the flow started on Luana and then shifted east one block. And this is now the scene on the ground there. Just hours later, when USGS flew over the flow field, the area has been totally transfigured. Fisher 8 is still active, but according to USGS at roughly 4 p.m., activity at Fisher 8 had started to wane. Now you can see how close some of these homes are to the active eruption and sometimes it's only a matter of a couple feet that means the difference between your house surviving and your house burning up. While all this has been ongoing, the Puhuo Nuo Puna in Pahoa, also known as the hub, is being built and expanded at a rapid pace. Community organizers such as Akai Kamarzo, but also many other people come together and get what needs to be done, done, so that the people that fled the eruption in a hurry are able to get the amenities, support, and even food that they need in a very timely and caring fashion. So one thing about May 6 here is this is the first day that the county authorities have started to allow residents back into the subdivision to collect belongings and further the evacuation. And this morning that this starts is not a good point for people to be going in there, but it needs to happen anyways. But this whole leads to a rather weird emergency notification sent out by Civil Defense a little later, and we'll get to that. The flow front of Fisher 8 remains active in this shot. You can see it moving throughout the subdivision and all the homes that remain in its way. It won't be far from here where Fisher 8 does stagnate and stall, but that won't be for a few hours yet. Behind the active flow front, you can see previously active fissures still venting sulfur dioxide and other emissions into the air. And then we pan back to the right, and if you look closely, you can see Fisher 8 back there still pumping. 
By late afternoon on May 6th, the eruption at Fisher 8 had diminished significantly and the flow front had almost stagnated. We go into the night, uneasy, waiting for what will come. One that ends up coming is an emergency alert from the county. It says, quote, Leilani subdivision south of Leilani between Capono and Mahala must exit through Poiki Road. Go now. When this came across, it was kind of a, what the, what is this? So, called some friends who were on the ground with Leilani. They happened to be standing with somebody from USGS on the ground. They said, yeah, we got the message. We looked at each other and shrugged. And that does sum up what this emergency alert was. There's two big issues with it. First is, there wasn't an emergency taking place, at least not a pressing one. The flow that might have been threatening that area had stalled hours earlier. And the urgency that is conveyed in the message is just not warranted. Secondly, the route that they advise people take through Poiki Road has been compromised. There's cracks running through the road, rather significant cracks, debris from the fissures, and a bunch of steam and SO2 that people would have to drive through to go out that way. There's essentially two ways out of Leilani Estates, out the top and then out Poiki Road. Of the two available, the authorities managed to pick the wrong one. Josh Pashenko here asked Civil Defense for a clarification after the message is released, and they say, oh, it wasn't an emergency. It, it really was a confusing message to put out there, but I just want to highlight it because just forgetting about it isn't going to help next time. This map here is from May 6th, and it shows the extent of the lava flows from Fisher 8 and the other fissures by mid-afternoon that day. And then 24 hours later, you can see how far those flows had advanced throughout the night and the next morning. Now, the one road that I'm looking at if I was to advise people to take any route, it would be Kahukai, which is the road that you see running on along the top that bends around the subdivision. And we end with a time lapse that I made using USGS footage from the PG cam, which was a static webcam positioned behind the Puna Geothermal Venture pointing towards Fisher 8. Before you go, one final message. Previously, I said that I was going to try and keep a daily pace with the eruption throughout with the publication of these videos. That ain't going to happen. Too much time, too uh, much editing, just unrealistic. So we're going to drop it back and do two a week following the live streams that we do on Kilauea and Mauna Loa, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. This video will appear roughly around 6 p.m., but following that live stream.